So guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Um, how are you keeping, guys? How are you keeping? As always, before I get into it, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video if you if you haven't. You're probably going to share it anyway, so I know what me t um, telling you to share it. I think you guys know, know the score now. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are keeping all well. Man, looking at myself in this camera, man, my beard's gone thick this is a thick beard um really one of the thickest beards i've had i'm gonna get rid of it um just been lazy over the holiday period so don't worry you won't see this you won't see this face any longer i will get rid of the, the beard i don't think it suits me too well i think it looks quite rough quite scruffy um and yeah i'll get rid of this very soon so yeah let's get into what i wanted to talk about though uh i want to talk about a fight that, you know, I think would be one of the biggest fights in boxing and a fight that I think a lot of you want to see and a fight that I think makes a lot of sense for both guys as well. Um, that is Javante Davis and Lomachenko. The reason why I want to talk about this fight, I saw an interview with Timothy Bradley and Bradley said, he was basically asked, do you think that's a competitive fight, Lomachenko and uh, Javante Davis? Assuming the reporter was asking that it won't be competitive from Lomachenko's standpoint, Lomachenko would just school him and make it look easy. And uh, Bradley responded the way I feel about the fight. He said, Javante Davis is a very dangerous fight for Lomachenko. It's not an easy fight. And a lot of you guys, I saw the comments on the video I did previously about this fight. And a lot of you guys dismissed it and said Lomachenko would school Javante. Now, I do favor Lomachenko in the fight. But the way some of you guys are dis disregarding Tank, and I don't think it's Tank's fault. I think it's the fact that Mayweather is, is, you know, maneuvering Tank in a certain way. I actually think the fans are actually not appreciating how good he is because what, what Javante Davis is being made out to be is a cherry picker. And the fans are disrespecting him and they think the reason why they're, they're cherry picking is because they, they don't feel he can beat the top level guys. I'll say this to you guys. I think Javante Davis is a serious talent. I don't think some of you guys give him the credit. And some of you guys maybe don't appreciate his skill set. He's more than just a puncher. He can box as well. And I think he showed that against Isaac Cruz. Now, he's not the best boxer in the world. He's not a Lomachenko. You know, he's not, you know, but he's an artist in his own way. Lomachenko is an artist. He's a master at what he does. Javante is an, an artist in his own way. Javante is a very, very dangerous fighter. Javante Davis puts a lot of pressure on you and the way he puts his shots together is frightening. You know, the uppercut against Leo Santa Cruz was a finger beauty. You know, the body shot against Mario Barrios was a finger beauty. You know, this is a very, very vicious fighter. Don't let the fight against Cruz you know, may you think otherwise. This is a very, very vicious fight. We're all entitled to have bad days, but let's not forget, I still felt he won the fight against Cruz. This is a very, very good fighter, guys, in Javante Davis. He's a very, he's a lot more than just a puncher. He sets his punches up very well. He's fast and he's explosive. He has the kind of power, wilder kind of power where he can put you to sleep, you know, with one punch. And I remember Jeff May where they're talking about Javante Davis saying, Javante, he has an X factor that all these lightweights don't have. That's power and he's spot on. Javante has X factor. When you have power like that and you have power to put a guy to sleep, that's X factor right there. Don't sleep, look, listen, I favor Lomachenko in that fight. I just think he's got too much experience. And I think his movement will give Tank a lot of trouble, but I don't favor him by a lot. 55-45 type of fight. Trust me when I say that. Javante Davis is a very, very highly skilled puncher. He's not a run-of-the-mill fighter. And I know a lot of you guys think that because some of you guys don't really like Mayweather and he's affiliated to Mayweather. I'm telling you now, Javante Davis isn't an ordinary fighter. My eyes don't lie to me. I've been, wa I've been watching this sport now for a while. And when I see something that I think, well, this is not an everyday fighter, this is a special talent. Javante Davis fits into that category. He may not be doing justice to his talent, fighting the guys that he's fighting, 
but believe you me, this is a man that can fight. And I'm not just say, I'm not just saying that. I really like Javante Davis. I always liked him. I've always liked him. I think he, there's a meanness and a viciousness to him. There's a mean streak to him. There's a, you know, he's a inside that ring. He's a he's a monster inside that ring. You know, I I think he's a very 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 handful for any fighter and for Lomachenko. Because if Lomachenko makes a mistake in that fight, Lomachenko could be put to sleep. Javante has that kind of power. People say, well, no, Cruz, well, he was hurt in that fight against Cruz. You know, he had his hand hurt, and yet he still managed to maneuver his way to a win. Like, that was Javante Davis probably at 60, maybe 65%. 100% Javante Davis is a very, very dangerous fighter. Very dangerous fighter. And yeah, he can be outboxed. For sure he can, we saw that against Santa Cruz, but then he put the way he put Santa Cruz to sleep, it was unbelievable. You know, Javante Davis is a handful for Lomachenko. Lomachenko is an also a handful for Javante Davis. And that's a barn burn, that's a proper fight because Lomachenko is a very exciting fighter. He's a, Lomachenko, the reason why I think it's such a great fight, and I think it's one of the biggest fights in boxing, and this is probably one of the biggest fights out there, I'll tell you why. I think stylistically, it makes for a great fight because Javante Davis likes guys going to him. Lomachenko's a pressure fighter. He's a very skilled pressure fighter. So how's Lomachenko going to approach this? Is Lomachenko going to use his height, range, and size to outbox him on the outside? Or is he going to do what he normally does and stalk opponents and walk him down? That surely would fit into Javante Davis' hands. Because that would let Javante Davis let his shots get off. And that would make it a very dangerous fight. Now Lomachenko has never really shown a weak chin. He's always shown a quite a solid, sturdy chin throughout his career. But against this type of power, look, this is different type of power. Linares put Lomachenko down. This is different power. This is the kind of power, explosive power that can put you to sleep. Javante Davis's power is not a myth. Believe you me, it's, it's real. That boy is for real. I'm telling you now, Javante Davis is a monster. You can just tell. He's no ordinary fighter. He's a very skilled puncher. Very dangerous fighter. A dangerous, dangerous puncher. Uh, and he sets up his punches very well. I, I actually love that fight, honestly. I think it's probably the fight I want to see the most in the lightweight division. I, I just think it's the best fight to be made. And I think Timothy Bradley agreed. I think Timothy Bradley thinks the same, that it's the best fight that can be made in the lightweight division without, without any question. I don't even think it's a debate. Javante Davis v Lomachenko is the best fight that can be made in the, in the lightweight division. There's no question. There's, there's no question whatsoever. It's an unbelievable matchup. Unbelievable matchup. Incredible fight it would be. I'm telling you, it'd be an incredible fight. It's a fight that I honestly I would I would I would walk over all that fight. I would love that fight. You know, I'd be willing to even if that was a fight on pay-per-view here in the UK, which it won't be, I would pay for it. Because it's just a mouth-watering clash. I think the styles would just clash beautifully and make for a very, very exciting fight. You know, can I see it happening? No. You know, Rick Glazer said something about about Mayweather. He basically said May Tank, why isn't Tank being put into these fights? Why is Tank not fighting the other top fighters? And Rick Glazer basically said that, or in a tweet said that Mayweather has one cash cow. That's Javante Davis. He's his cash cow. Why is he, if he risks that cash cow and that cash cow gets beat, then Mayweather has no cash cow. He has no other fighters. Javante Davis is that, he is the cash cow. He is the guy that's, you know, the you know, potential future superstar in the sport of boxing. Mayweather knows that. Mayweather, that's why Mayweather's matching him carefully because he knows if I match him harshly and he loses against somebody, then that, that's all over. The hype and the you know all the all the money that you know they've invested and the money that you know he could potentially you know get back and 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 you know make for May Mayweather and himself will all go everything will disappear so 
I can understand why Mayweather's being cautious with his matchmaking. You can understand why. Mayweather's gonna be cautious because he knows that's his only big cash cow and he's a very, very valuable asset. You know, he's a guy that potentially could be a future superstar. You know, he has all the ingredients, great style. He has a huge fan base. He, you know, he's a great fighter, of course. He's got a lot of fights that, you know, in around his weight division that could be mega fights. So, uh, Javante Davis has got the hallmarks to be a superstar. And Mayweather knows that. But he's matching him carefully because he doesn't want him to lose because he knows how much that will affect that asset, how much that will affect the brand of Javante Davis if he loses. Hence why he's being matched very carefully, which is sad. Which is sad, really, because I think Javante Davis is ready for that step up. I saw a video, I can't remember who it was, that someone was saying that Javante Davis actually wants that step up. Javante Davis probably does, because every fighter wants to be tested against the best. So he's probably at the stage where Javante Davis wants to stabilize his off and he just wants to fight everybody and anybody. Javante Davis is a fighter, he's a proper, proper fighter. Javante Davis isn't a cherry picker himself, he'd fight anyone. The only problem is, is that the matchmaking and his, you know, his people behind and they want to match him carefully at this point because they don't want him to lose. Uh, they want to make sure that, you know, they can make Javante Davis a megastar and not match him so hard, so hard at this point in case he loses and then everything, you know, basically disappears from there. So... I can understand why, you know, Mayweather is taking the approach he's taking. You know, a lot of people say Mayweather, uh, cherry pick. Mayweather fought all the best guys from, a, you know, when he was in the smaller weight classes. He wasn't cherry picking. It's only when he got up to the higher weight classes in Mayweather. Because early on, you can't cherry pick. Early on in your career, you can't cherry pick. You have to fight the best. And that's what Mayweather did because Mayweather didn't have a leg up like Tank has a leg up. Because Tank has got Mayweather behind him. Hence why he's being able to do what he's being able to do. Mayweather didn't have that. When Mayweather was coming up, he was in a star. Nobody even really knew him. It's only when he fought Oscar is that when his name transcended and he became a mega, you know, star. But prior to that, Mayweather had to, Mayweather had to, he had to fight everybody. And he did. And he beat a lot of top guys. But because of the fact that Javante Davis is already a star early on in his career, not a Mayweather type star, but definitely a star and he's got the Mayweather name backing him they're able to pick and choose Mayweather wasn't able to do that yeah and a normal fighter that's coming up that hasn't got the name that hasn't got the recognition he can't do that like Josh Taylor for example he didn't have that backing he doesn't have that name he doesn't have that appeal so he had to fight the best to get some recognition same with someone like for example Actually, M.A. Khan's probably a wrong example because he, he did have a lot of backing and he he was a mega star as soon as he left the Olympics. You know, he became a huge star and, and he had a huge fan base. Josh Taylor's somebody that's actually didn't have a name and he's had to work his way up um, because he doesn't have that backing. So now he's in a position after achieving what he's achieved, he's in a great position. But Javante Davis... He's, he's already a star, so they're trying to match him carefully because they don't want him to lose. Whereas, like Mayweather, so when people say that, oh, they, they, Javante Davis is doing what Mayweather did, no, he's not. Because Mayweather, early on in his career, had no choice but to fight the best, and he did fight the best, and he beat the best in the smaller weight classes. Only when he became a mega star, when he went up to the higher weight classes, welterweight and, you know, stuff like that, that's when he started, you know, becoming a little bit of a you know, pick and choose, you know, who is he going to fight? Not early on in his career, he didn't have, he couldn't do it. He had to fight the best. He had no choice in order to create a name for himself. He had to fight the best because that's how you're going to be regarded as a top fighter. And that's when you're going to get the opportunities in the mega fights, which Mayweather did. And then he became the A-side. But Javante Davis is kind of already the A-side because he, he has a huge promotional backing from Mayweather and he has Mayweather's name which makes him a big star and he's also a very fan friendly fighter and a great fighter which makes him a bigger star. Do you understand? So Javante Davis, 
he doesn't need to be matched harshly because he's already got that he's already got that name and he's already got that you know the I, although you know I think the fans are now starting to get frustrated with his matchmaking he's going to have to now step it up because fans are frustrated so they want to see him in a proper fight they don't want to see him carrying on fighting the guys that he's fighting hence why the pay-per-views probably didn't do as well last time so he's now going to have to step up but then having said that Jake Paul didn't do huge numbers either so this is what I'm saying that fans now they want to see good matchmaking. They want to see him in there. And he probably wants to see him in there. But is, it, is the Lomachenko fight going to happen? Probably not. Because as I just mentioned, it's a very risky fight for Javante Davis at this point in his career. And he's only 27. You know, so I don't know if that fight will ever happen. And Mayweather has also said that they'll only fight people on their own promotional side. So from the PBC, which is very disappointing to hear because that means there's a lot of fights that won't get made you know which would be kind of disappointing if I'm totally honest with you because we know that Lomachenko is with Bob Arum you know Floyd Mayweather I reckon Floyd Mayweather could work with Bob Arum I don't think I know they've had their issues in the past but I think Floyd Mayweather could work with Arum to make that fight but do I think it's going to happen no not because I don't think Mayweather wouldn't work with Bob Arum. That would obviously be an issue. But I think the main issue is, I think, the fact that they think that Lomachenko would be a dangerous fight for Javante Davis. Obviously, they wouldn't say it. But it's quite obvious that it would be. And they would be thinking that if he loses that fight, you know, Tank's going to lose his appeal. Which I don't agree with, to be honest. One of the worst things I think that fighters do now is try to take that Mayweather blueprint and try to make out that a loss is the end of the world. It never used to be 30, 40 years ago. Why is it now? Because of the fact that Mayweather changed the sport where he kind of had a, had a blueprint of he was never beat. And now every fighter wants to be like that. They never want to be, they don't want to lose because they want to be like Mayweather. But not every fighter can be like that. And hence why they start cherry picking and ducking fights and not taking the best because they want that. Oh, that O is so valuable. But before it never used to be as valuable. Fighters used to fight everybody and anybody. They didn't care of taking losses. But now that O has become so valuable. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we get to see Javante Davis Lomachenko in the future. I'm not... I, I do think stylistically is a dangerous fight for... Uh, Lomachenko though I don't think that's an easy fight I think that fight could go either way but I do favor Lomachenko what do you guys think leave your thoughts in the comment section below let me know what you think in the comment section leave your thoughts and guys remember to please like share subscribe to my channel uh, share the video and I'll see you guys in the next video peace